name is Jenna Cochran. I work in the admissions office at Holyoke Community College. And my role at HCC is to work with um, students in our dual enrollment program, as well as our early college partnership, which is a new partnership with Holyoke um, High School. Um, so I'm here tonight to talk to you specifically about dual enrollment opportunities for Holyoke High students. Um, so as you can see, so we have a number of different terms around um, this idea of students earning college credit while they're still in high school. So um, tonight we're going to talk specifically about dual enrollment. Dual enrollment is a program that's available to high school juniors and seniors. We've had a number of Holyoke High students over the years uh, taking classes at HCC and earning college credits um, that they've been able to use towards an associate degree at Holyoke Community College. Or some students have chosen to transfer those credits to four-year colleges and universities after graduating from high school. So I want to start by talking a little bit about what dual enrollment is all about. So, um, so I mentioned before, um, this is an opportunity for students to earn uh, college credits while they're still in high school. Any student that participates in the dual enrollment program is getting both high school and college credit. So what that means is not only are they starting a college transcript um, of credits that can be used towards a college degree, these courses are also reflected on the high school transcript as well showing that students have taken the additional challenge of taking college coursework early on. Um, and those courses are often weighted at the honors or AP level um, because of the additional challenge they're taking on with it. So, let me see. One quick interruption. Disculpa la interrupción, pero necesita alguien traductor, traducción. Tenemos interpretación si se necesita. No? Okay. Sorry for the interruption. No problem. Thank you. Um, so one of the, the most important things to know about these dual enrollment opportunities is that they, these courses are all free for Holyoke High students. So that's one of the most exciting parts of, of this partnership with Holyoke High School. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the funding piece and how, um, how funding is available for dual enrollment students. Um, but there's no cost to the student to take classes and also all the textbooks and supplies that go along with the college course are covered. Um, as well for our dual enrollment students. We're going to try the mic again. So the mic, yep, it's still not working yet, but that's okay. We'll keep working on the mic. And if not, I'll try to keep my voice loud enough so everyone can hear. Uh, we've had um, a combination of students taking classes at Poyo Community College. We've also, in years past, offered a limited number of courses on, on the high school um, campus as well. Um, so it works both ways. Students can either take classes in a college um, environment with other college students or they can stay right here at Holyoke High. We send a Hol um, Holyoke Community College professor um, to the high school to, take, to teach the course uh, with other high school students. Um, the transferable credit. So this is really important for um, students to know about. Um, like I said before, so some students choose to use these credits towards an associate degree at HCC. Um, also, many students that I work with will choose to transfer these credits to four-year colleges or universities. A big part of my role is to work with students throughout the advising process, helping students pick out classes and talking about um, each student's individual goals after high school um, so that we can make sure we're picking the right course so that this course um, can be used towards an associate degree or a bachelor's degree. Um, I am quite familiar with a number of the schools in the area and schools that will accept dual enrollment credits. There also are some schools um, that don't accept dual enrollment credits as well. So that's part of the conversation that I like to have with students as I meet with them so that they have that information up front. Also, as students start thinking about what schools they're going to be applying to, it's a great question to ask when you go for that campus visit. Um, or if you talk to an admission representative at a college fair, just so that you know up front whether or not these credits will be transferable to that particular college or university. All righty. So in terms of funding for these classes, in order to get funding for dual enrollment courses, um, Holyoke High students need to fill out a FAFSA form, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. 
So many of you may have heard this term before. So once you get to your senior year, if you're applying for financial aid um, for your freshman year in college, you're going to need to fill out a FAFSA form that senior year of high school. Through the dual enrollment program, we're having these students fill out the FAFSA form early on, so as early as their sophomore or junior year, to provide funding to cover their dual enrollment courses. Um, the FAFSA form is an online application that can be completed on the FAFSA website, um, which is listed up on the screen. The priority deadline to complete the FAFSA form is May 1st, so that's coming up in a few weeks. Um, that way, if you meet that May 1st deadline, then we know that your financial aid application will be processed and reviewed in time um, for the funding to be in place for a fall semester class. And in addition, it also allows any student that completes their financial aid application will automatically have funding available to cover their textbooks, books, and supplies. Um, but we need to make sure that the FAFSA is completed in a timely manner so that we can have that funding available to students um, for books uh, so they can purchase them before uh, the semester starts in September. Um, so that kind of gives you all the information about the funding piece. Students can take more than one class once they complete the FAFSA form. If approved by the high school, um, that would allow them to take um, one or two classes at HCC and have full funding for those courses. Okay, so let's look at some of the cost savings. Um, so we mentioned before the program is open to juniors and seniors. Um, for those of you that have a student that is going to be a rising senior, um, seniors would have an opportun opportunity to take three college courses. So one college course during the summer, um, going into their senior year, and then a second college course in the fall of their senior year, and a third college course in the spring of their senior year. The cost of a college course is roughly uh, $720 or so uh, for a three credit class. So as you can see from the screen that that's a total savings of over $2,000 uh, for seniors taking those three college courses. If you are a rising junior, you would have the opportunity to take three classes your junior year, including a summer class, and an additional three classes um, your senior year for over $4,000 in savings. Um, and again, that's, that's a huge amount of money that you're saving um, that's completely free um, through the dual enrollment program. All right, so when a student comes through the dual enrollment program, again, I mentioned before, students will meet with me for advising in the course selection process, but our dual enrollment students typically are coming to HCC um, they're taking college classes on our campus with other college students, um, and they're able to take any class that we offer at HCC. So they're not limited to a certain group of courses that they can take as a high school student. These are some examples of courses that students have taken through the dual enrollment program, but they're not limited to this list by any means. So I will generally, sorry, I'll um, meet with students and talk about their goals in terms of majors in college, careers after, um, after completing their college degree, so that we can get an idea of what type of course is going to be the best fit for that student. I generally advise students to focus on completing courses that fall within their general education requirements. So those core courses that students are going to need for various degrees, because um, I find that those courses are going to be most easily transferable to four-year colleges and universities. And we want to make sure that students are able to benefit from this program, from the work and effort that they put into their dual enrollment courses. In some instances, students will choose to take a course that's a little bit more career focused um, as an exploratory course. So they may want to learn a little bit more about criminal justice, for example, or um, healthcare. They may decide to take intro to health careers to learn about health fields. Uh, and that will help them so by their senior year, they'll have a better idea of where their interests are um, and what types of careers and majors are the best fit for them. In the summertime, um, we have some options for some free coursework for high school students. Um, through our Perkins grant, um, we're offering two courses for free. Um, we are offering a computer applications course and also an intro to robotics class. Both of these classes are offered um, in July. They start July 8th, they run through August 8th. Um, the computer applications course, which is Business 115, is a course that's required for all of our business majors. So any student that knows they want to go into business in college, this is going to be a required course that you're going to have to take. So it's a great way to get this requirement done er early on. It provides an overview of Microsoft Office, of spreadsheets, 
of um, general knowledge of computer use to help prepare students for their, for their um, future classes in college. The Intro to Robotics class is a four-credit lab science, um, and that's a course that's offered on our campus. So it's a very hands-on course where students are actually working in teams in, throughout um, the course, um, building their own robots, and they would get credit for a lab science requirement. In, uh, for an associate degree program, students are required to complete two lab science courses, so this would be fulfill one of those lab science requirements. Um, I work very closely with Heidi Rademacher. She oversees the Summer Perkins program, um, so she, I would be able to direct you to Heidi and get you connected if you're interested in signing up for either one of these classes. And both of these classes are offered on the HCC campus, um, so it's they're about four weeks long, so July 8th through August 8th, and they're offered during the daytime, Monday through Thursday. Another option for free summer courses is through our STEM Starter Academy. Um, the STEM Starter Academy is another grant program that um, is providing two lab science options for students to take over the summer, completely free. Um, the tuition and fees are covered through the grant, as well as all the textbooks and supplies needed for the course. Both of the STEM courses uh, fulfill lab science requirements. They both have a lab component, so they're four credit classes. And uh, they allow students to explore um, the fields of life science, and then there's also a course around physical sciences. So these are really exploratory-based courses. They're very hands-on. Um, they have special speakers coming in throughout um, the summer course. They have field trips planned for students. And they're just working in small groups, hands-on, um, to experience the material. And the STEM courses are also offered in July, so it works out well for high school students to take um, once the school year finishes up. So just to give you an idea of the commitment that it takes in order to enroll in dual enrollment. Um, so these are college level courses. Um, some of our dual enrollment students are coming to campus and their professor may not know that they're a high school student. Uh, so they're treated just like any other um, college student on campus. So we want to make sure that students are prepared, um, that they, they know the work um, commitment that's going to be required for a dual enrollment course. Um, and that they're, they're prepared to put in the time um, and the homework that's going to be required for the class. Each of our classes um, that meets on campus for a three credit class will typically meet for three contact hours, so three hours of class time per week. Um, and those classes may be set up where they meet three days a week for 50 minute class periods, um, or they may be set up where they meet twice a week for an hour and 15 minute class periods. We also have classes that meet um, once a week, generally in the evening, um, and they would run from 6.15 to 9 o'clock. Um, so I work with students, I work with the school counselors here at the high school in trying to find the best time that works with, this, with each student's uh, very busy schedule. Uh, after working with students for a number of years, I know that there's a lot of different pieces that go into scheduling. Um, the high school schedules are, are fairly packed full. A lot of students have after school activities and sports. Um, so we try to work around that and find the best possible time um, for your student to be able to commit to being on the HCC campus. Um, a lot of students during the school day have opted to take classes first thing in the morning um, from 8 o'clock to 8.50. Um, we also have students that will take a class at the end of the school day, uh, so a 2 o'clock class, and they may miss the last period of, of the high school. Um, so there's different ways that it can be incorporated into the school day. And then students have the option of taking the classes after school as well if they choose to do that instead. For every hour that you're in the class, um, students are expected to be prepared to commit two to three hours of outside of class homework, reading, um, preparing for exams, writing papers. So for a three credit class, that's going to be six to nine additional hours that you want to be prepared for. Um, so not only are you going to class for the dual enrollment class, but you're also going to be expected to be keeping up with the homework uh, and the readings required of a college course as well. So all of these courses are recorded on your HCC transcript. So this is a really awesome thing because students graduate from high school, they already have a college transcript that can be used towards their college degree. Um, but it also means that we want to really ensure that your student is ready for this taking on this challenge. Uh, we want their first experience in college to be a successful experience. Um, so we try to kind of just prepare students for, for what the workload is going to be like, making sure it's going to fit in with their schedule, and that they're going to have the time um, outside of class to dedicate to the course as well. 
Um, we also, we do send the transcripts to the high school um, to be included on the high school transcript as well. Um, so students should be um, just aware that that will be happening. So I mentioned before that a dual enrollment student is treated just like any other college student at HCC. And what that also means is that they are able to benefit from all the different support services that are available to any other HCC student on campus. So we have things like a new student orientation. We actually have a special orientation for dual enrollment students that takes place before the start of each semester. And that orientation program is open to students and to parents and family. So we want students to kind of know what to expect from their first semester in college. We also offer uh, tours of the campus during orientation. We help students with logging into their HCC email account. We help them with logging into their Moodle account, which is where our kind of online um, platform for college courses. A lot of our on-campus courses use Moodle as well. So we want to make sure students are comfortable with that before the semester starts. And all that's covered during orientation. We also have free tutoring in every subject area um, that's available for any dual enrollment student. So students can stop by the tutoring center and sign up for a meeting with a tutor in any subject. Um, we, uh, in addition, have our writing center and a math center that are open on a walk-in basis. So all of those extra support services are available after school hours. So um, the CAP Center, which is where the writing center, the tutoring center, and the math center are um, housed, um, they are open until 6 o'clock Monday through Thursday. So students could stop in any time after school and get the extra help that they need. Um, so they have ongoing advising support um, and career uh, access to career counselors on campus as well, and a free PBTA bus pass. So some of you may be wondering, how is my child going to get to HCC and back to the high school? Um, so students have kind of tried a, a, a variety of different uh, modes of transportation. Um, every student does get a free PBTA bus pass, so it's a really easy route from Holyoke High to the campus and back um, on PBTA. And that bus pass can be used for any of the PBTA bus, pass, um, bus routes as well. Um, some students also have um, been relying on transportation from a parent or family member. So they'll get dropped off to campus. And then we have some students that have their own car and are able to drive back and forth. Um, so there's a, a few different ways for students to make that work with the transportation piece. Um, and then lastly, the um, gym membership is a nice extra perk too. Uh, every student will have a free membership to use a gym on campus that they can use at any point um, during the week, on the weekends. Uh, so it helps um, with keeping up with fitness as well. So now that we talked a little bit about what the dual enrollment program is, I want to also talk about the application process and how to apply to the program. Um, in order to apply to um, the dual enrollment program, students will complete an online application. So you can go onto the HCC website under admission, you click on apply, it'll bring you to this screen, um, or you can go to hcc.edu slash apply. Um, and the first step is to start by creating an account with us. So you would click on the create account icon, um, and then fill in the form for creating an account. Once that, once that step is completed, students can go on to start an undergraduate application. So they're going to be filling out the same application that any other HCC student fills out. Um, however, on the online application, we do ask some specific questions about your intentions as a student at HCC. Um, so there's a question about what will you be entering HCC as. From the drop-down box, students will want to make sure they select that you are a high school student taking classes at HCC. So that way we know um, that you'll be flagged as a dual enrollment student. We'll process your app application appropriately. Once you complete the online application, um, please um, keep in mind, um, when you apply, you are required to submit your email address. So we ask that students use their own personal email address. Um, I discourage um, parents from using their email address, applying on behalf of your son or daughter. Um, I really want students to be applying on their own, using their own personal email address, because all of our communication going forward will be sent to that email. And we want to make sure that students are starting to get responsible for checking um, their email and staying on top of the next steps in the process. Um, so once they apply, the next step is that each student will be asked to complete some supplemental paperwork for the dual enrollment program. We have two supplemental forms that get emailed to students, um, and we need a copy of the high school transcript as well. So what's been working out really well for Holyoke High students is once they get that email with their supplemental forms, they can print them out and bring them to their school counselor here at the high school, um, and the school counselors have been able to just send over 
um, all of the supplemental paperwork to me directly um, to get that um, processed and added to their file right away. Um, one of the supplemental forms needs to be signed by your school counselor, giving the student permission to participate in the program. The second form needs to be signed both by the student and a parent guardian to participate in the program. Um, so that's a supplemental piece. Um, as soon as an, a student finishes the application process, um, they will be notified about placement testing and course registration. And placement testing is something that all of our students will go through um, in order to see what level courses we can place you into. Um, so for your first college course, we want to make sure that we're placing you on the appropriate level so that the student is going to be successful. Um, the placement test um, covers English and math, and that way it gives us an idea of if a student is ready for college level English, a college level math course, or the student may need some developmental coursework, um, pre-college English or math. Um, generally, if a student places into a pre-college level in English or math, um, we'll be able to look for courses that don't have a prerequisite that still count for college credit. Because remember, the goal of this program is that students are earning college credit. Um, so any developmental or pre-college coursework we want you to continue working on at the high school. Um, and any coursework that you're taking through HCC, we want you to be earning college credit. Um, so I will look, work with the student on looking at what types of courses you are eligible for, um, regardless of where you place on the placement test. And we'll also try to match up those course selections with that student's individual goals um, and majors um, after, um, after high school. Um, so that kind of gives you an overview of the admission process um, and how a student enrolls in the program. The application deadline for the fall semester is June 30th. Um, so it's right at the end of the school year. So we want all students, ideally, to have their application submitted and placement testing and course registration done before the school year ends. Um, so that students know exactly what classes they're taking at HCC, and also so that school counselors can uh, be aware of what courses your student is taking at HCC and how that's going to fit in with the high school schedule as well. Um, so does anyone have any questions about the program? Yes? If going through the Perkins grant, how does that work with the registration? Do you apply for the grant prior to so yes, you would fill out an application, you would go through the same application process, apply online, create an account, apply online, submit your supplement, and then you'll be able to register for the summer Perkins course. And technically there's no placement testing required for those two courses because there's no prerequisites for those courses. So a student would be able to just skip right over to registration once they apply. And those courses start in July. Um, there's no set application deadline to apply for our summer classes. Um, however, um, the student can enroll until the class is full. So once the class fills up, um, there will no longer be space for a student to, to join that particular section. Another, yes? Uh, if you want to do summer and fall, do you have to fill out two? Oh, that's a great question. No, you don't have to apply twice. So you can apply for the summer. And then once you apply once, you'll be able to continue on. Um, your application stat your admission status stays active, so you don't need to reapply the second time around. And that's true also if you're planning on taking a fall class and a spring class, you only need to apply once. I will be available afterwards, so if anyone has individual questions. Also, I did bring some handouts, so I have the supplemental forms that will be emailed to students, but if you want to pick up a paper copy while you're here today, you can, you're welcome to do so. And also, I brought information about financial aid, um, applying, um, filling out the FAFSA form, and also our financial aid office is available to assist students with that whole process. Um, so if you need any help um, on the FAFSA form, you can come to one of our financial aid workshops, you can come to the financial aid office to meet with a counselor one-on-one, -on -one, and they'll be able to help walk you through the whole process of completing the FAFSA form. So I have information about FAFSA workshops and how to reach the financial aid office for any assistance as well. So thank you all so much for, for coming tonight um, and for listening, and feel free to come up and grab information or stick around for any questions that you have afterwards. Thanks. We currently have about 60 Holyoke High students participating in the program. Those are high school juniors and seniors that are coming to HCC to take classes for both high school and college credit. Um, so students are in the classroom with other college students. 
Um, they're earning college credit. They're using these credits towards an associate degree at HCC, or some students are choosing to transfer the credits to other um, four-year colleges and universities. The program continues to grow each year, so our numbers are increasing. Um, students are talking about it at the high school, about their positive experiences at HCC, um, and most importantly, students are doing really well. We've seen a great amount of success uh, of our dual enrollment students.